Namaste. Welcome to the class. Uh, for long time, you are studying Bharatanatyam and you have come across so many gurus, dancers, teachers, scholars, thinkers, writers and of course performers of Bharatanatyam. Here, today we shall discuss a few of them and all of them have come from different social, cultural, uh, geographical, economical backgrounds. The only and only inspiring thing is their perseverance and their passion for dance. By looking through a few of them, you will realize your path. Uh, Padma Subramanyam, Dr. Padma Subramanyam. The four decades of 1960 to 1990 saw a generation of vibrant, path-breaking Bharatanatyam dancers. Padma Subramanyam combined scholarship in Natya Shastra with singular dance talent. Her path-breaking work on the documentation of Karanas she identified on the dancing figures of the Meenakshi Temple Gopuram was added creatively to her dance movements, a practical application of the fruit of her research. Padma's Bharatanrattam became inclusive of movements not found in Bharatanatyam of the 60s. The Karana theory as mentioned in the text guided Padma's approach to her dance. Her in-depth Natya Shastra research had many students from other dance disciplines attend her classes for theoretical knowledge and erudition at her institution Nrityodaya. Dr. Subramanyam's skill for conceptualizing and solo dancing an entire ballet such as Krishnaya Tubhyam Namaha, Ramaya Tubhyam Namaha is also a rare gift and hardly any other dancer has matched it. Yamini Krishnamurti is another magnetic presence in the field of dance. It was in 1960s that classical Bharatanatyam saw in Yamini Krishnamurti a young dancer with magnetic and mesmerizing presence rising on the horizon. Yamini captured the hearts of cosmopolitan audiences with the sheer power of her brilliance and stage presence. As a performer, if Bala with her magic stunned people into silence, Yamini made them erupt in applause. Trained initially at Kalakshetra and later under the gurus like Ellappa Pillai and Gauri Imma, Yamini's dance, exuding uninhibited passion and sensuality, was unusual for the post Devadasi phase. Her programs were presided over by her father, a noted Sanskrit scholar, and he supervised her career with expertise. Her sister Jyotishmati whose melodic music accompanied the dance was a huge strength. Uh, it was the father of Yamini Krishnamurti who spotted in the rustic yet compelling Kuchipudi presentation of Guru Vedantam Raghavaya, a dance form which he realized had tremendous potential for Yamini's stage performances along with Bharatanatyam. Her vibrant dance with statistic poses and impeccable rhythmic command responded well to Kuchipudi. Like Shanta Rao earlier, her performances comprised more than one form, starting with Bharatanatyam and followed it in the second half with the inevitable Krishna Shabdam, scenes from Bhama Kalakpam and Tarangam at times even including an item or two of odyssey for which she trained under Pankaj Charandas. 
It was her Kuchipudi brilliance that finally put this dance form on the pan-Indian stage. The majesty of Bharatanatyam, followed by the mercurial speed and grace of Kuchipudi, concluding with languor of Odyssey, made for rivetting variety in one recital. The Viriboni Bhairavi Varnam, originally part of the classical singer's repertoire, was brought into Bharatanatyam by Yamini. Watching her perform the Husseini Swarajati, even Bala was spurred to words of praise. Her presentation of the Pantu Valali Varnam, Chalamu J.C. moved the audience to tears. The Naika's sensuous persuasion while rendering the Charanam line in the Khama Swarnam, Va 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 and Pachaket Va mesmerized audiences. Never a wilting heroine, no matter what the Naika's mood, there was a stream of spirited womanhood one experienced in Yamini's proud bearing. No, let me add something here that as we are doing this study, Yamini ji is awarded with Padma Bhushan, one of the most coveted titles that she really deserves. And here we are going to talk of uh, an unsung dancer. She was a devoted artist. Uh, Srimati Anjali Mehr passed away on February 10, 1979. Her death was sudden as it was untimely. Dance personified an artist's par excellence, a beautiful soul and a vibrant woman of substance. She was barely 50 years old when she died. If classical dance has arrived and established in Gujarat pre and post independence, the credit goes to the Sriman Sayajirav Gayakwad of Baroda as well as to the three most talented, devoted, revolutionary and missionary women, Srimati Mrinalini Sarabhai, Srimati Kumudini Lakya and Srimati Anjali Mehr. The first two with their family backgrounds and wealth established great dance institutions in Ahmedabad, whereas the third devoted her life to serious dance education and teaching at the Maharaja Sayajirav University in Baroda. Anjali Ben went to Kalakshetra as a young girl, almost the first few to go there and the first Gujarati. She was the foremost disciple of Srimati Rukmini Devi Arundel. She imbibed the best of her guru and the institution for seven to eight years before returning back to Mumbai. She was thoroughly trained in Bharatanatyam and was well versed in Tamil, Telugu and in Carnatic music, literature and poetry. She joined the Faculty of Performing Arts, then known as the Music College, as a guest faculty in 1955 and progressed quickly to become its head Department of Dance from 1962 till her death in 79. She built the department's strengths in teaching, research and performances. She created a strong foundation that continues to serve as a platform for the future generations. Anjali was a philosopher. She defied, challenged and expanded the horizons of Bharat Natyam. An extraordinary teacher, a discerning aesthet, a musician of high caliber and a sensitive poet, she revolutionized the traditional world of Bharatanatyam with several compositions in Gujarati. Her creative, dedicated, brave but very traditional approach to the art of Bharatanatyam was sensible but was not enough. Though considered a traditionalist, hers was a free spirit. She saw the infinite scope of the art of Bharatanatyam. By 70s, Anjali also realized her own personal need to express the ethos of the culture that she belonged to, that of Gujarat. From almost 1970 till her death in 79, her pride of being a Gujarati, her need to reach out to the Gujarati people and perhaps the most important to let the world know that Gujarat and Gujaratis are not only supporter of the art of dance, but also excel in all the aspects of it. 
द फर्स्ट ओरिजिनल मार्गम इन गुजराती शचि पौलमी रामायण नटिर पूजा बुद्ध चरित्र नवल नायिका विथ अश्व नायिका राधानु शमणु एंड द अनफर्गेटेबल श्री चंद्रमौली कुरवंजी आर सम ऑफ हर आउटस्टेन्डिंग लैंडमार्क कंपोजिशन्स एंड कोरियोग्राफ बैलेज ऑफ दैट पीरियड दीज आर द लैंडमार्क्स इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ डांस द नाइट शी डाइड वॉज द डेब्यू परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ हर मोस्ट कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल एंड क्रिएटिव प्रोडक्शन ऑफ श्री मुत्तुस्वामी दीक्षितार्स नवग्रह कृतिज इट वॉज अ लैंडमार्क इन एब्सट्रैक्शन द प्लैनेटरी मूवमेंट्स एंड कन्फ्यूगरेशन वर ब्रॉट आउट इन कोरियोग्राफी विथ विविड फॉर्मेशन यूजिंग एंड क्रिएटिंग स्पेशल शोलूज कॉस्ट्यूम्स इमेजिनेटिव लाइटिंग एंड मूवमेंट्स Anjali wove modern and contemporary design while using traditional Bharatanatyam. If she was alive today, this composition would be a point of reference for the history of modern dance in India. Anjali Mayer was also the first to start the dance documentation in the Maharaja Sayajirao University way back in 1962, creating and using stick figures to draw dance items. at the university it helped not only the local students but the students coming from other countries as well she produced three doctorates under her one of them is dr sunil kothari her story is the struggle of an artist born without a silver spoon who defied all for the sake of her love passion and commitment to dance and who in this generation of india in this india today does not know vaijayanti mala bali either as a film actress as a dancer or as both she was trained under guru vasur ramaiya pillai and guru k n dandayuth pani pillai these two great masters she was lucky to be trained and she developed into a fine dancer who performed all over the world at the most prestigious events she also became a popular film actress and after successful career in films and marriage she has returned to her first love that is bharatanatyam she has established her school natyalaya in chennai she has choreographed dance dramas like andal tirupavai tagore's chandalika and kavi kunjar bharati's asgar kurvanji and also successfully revived forms such as navasandhi mela prapti and thodaya mangalam prabandham such and so many others it was it's it's almost so heartwarming to see the precise clean chest bharatanatyam coming from such also revered actress the one of the leading another leading gurus and loving guru is saroja vaidyanathan initially trained in bharatanatyam under guru lalita saraswat lalita at saraswati gana nilayam and later under guru kutumanar muttukumaran pillai of tanjavur She is the third generation disciple of this venerable guru. She gave up her career in performance early due to her marriage but again re-established as her own dance school Natyalaya in Delhi. She has become a prolific choreographer and has trained a number of young dancers. Her training and in the training she is in today many from the underprivileged families under the ngo sarvam she has to her credit 10 full length ballets on diverse themes ranging from mythological stories to women's empowerment and nearly 2000 bharatanatyam items saroja has written a number of books on bharatanatyam and carnatic music including the classical dances of india for the education purpose 
Bharatanatyam and in-depth study, Karnataka Sangeetam and the science of Bharatanatyam. She has also released a couple of series on Subramanyam Bharati's poems, series of three full margams, a CD on the life of Paramacharya and video series of two full margams. Also a video of the basic Ardavus, fundamental Ardavus along with the Hastas that is the gestures, their Vinayogas, their Bheda, Rasa and Gati for educational and art and educational institutions. Dr. Sudharani Raghupati is an aesthet. A contemporary of Chitra Vishweshwaran, Sudharani Raghupati was a student of U.S. Krishna Rao and later of Kittappa Pillai. She was an imaginative choreographer and fine teacher and established her own school in Chennai, Shri Bharatalaya, training a long line of dancers, many of whom were also good at Natuvangam. Her own son was an excellent Vridangam player and so proved a very useful to her institution. She worked closely with Madurai Krishnan, a talented music composer, and so with such support systems, Sudharani was able to build up a formidable repertoire. Her signature Varnam, Maye Madhana Sudari, composed in Todi by Madurai Krishnan, was extremely popular with dance Cognoscenti. It is important to remember that dancers such as Chitra and Sudharani were supported by great singers like Madurai Krishnan, Madurai Seturaman, Sri Rajeshwari and also talented Mridangis such as Trichur Ramaratan. Many of them were working in Vaijantimala Bali's institution. In the process of working with such fabulous dancers, Madurai Krishnan and Madurai Setu Raman created compositions in the Bhakti Bhava, which turned out to be excellent material for young dancers, still too immature to emote the Shingara. And Chitra Vishweshwaran was Guru Varuvur Ramaya Pillai's disciple. Though she studied at Kolkata's Ravindra Bharti and privately tutor under T. A. Rajalakshmi, a Devadasi trained under Kuppaya Pillai. As a result of these combined influences in Chitra's dance, one saw the delicate torso reflections of the Devadasi as also the light-footed grace of the Vadovar school. Chitra became known for the intensity of emotional expressions she brought to her dance and performances, as well as a mixture of South and North heritage, having lived for the most time outside Chennai. Her marriage to Vishweshwaran, a Santur player and a Carnatic singer added to this mixed influences. This is superbly illustrated in one of her productions where the two heroines, Andal and Meera, are identified with Hindustani and Carnatic background music as well as subtle differences in body language that highlighted the socio-cultural differences between the two women. Chitra composed and choreographed most of the items she performed as the aging Guru Vaduvur had apparently forbidden her for presenting any item from the repertoire he had taught without him conducting the program. Chitra's innovative production Ganga contained unique idea where she introduced the narrative tradition and episodic sequences in the interpretative passages of the Varnam. Here the dancer taking a parvat changing from one side to the stage to another, moving from one role to another in a dialogue, an aspect greeted with mixed feelings. But normally this is seen in a lot of theatre productions. And let's talk of an articulate speaker and author of dance, Srimati Lakshmi Vishwanathan. She has made a name for herself as a graceful Abhinaya artist. Her Abhinaya delights in the Angika element with the body language as the 
com as communicative as the facial expression in conveying the emotions. She believes that dance and shingar are not special to only Devadasis and the lyrics of Padams and Javalis are part of the Carnatic music repertoire open to one and all. This is very well reflected in her own performances. And then we have the divas or the young and energetic dancers who are in the top form and on the international scene such as Alamel Walli and Malvika Surukai. The next generation saw the rise of two extremely talented and naturally gifted dancers, Malvika Surukai and Alamel Walli. One part patrician and introverted and other exuberant and outward looking. It is interesting that their approach to their dance practice reflected these personal traits as well. And it is so very clear from the Laban movement analysis that the movements reflect whatever you are. Both dancers are articulate in explaining their thoughts on dance that make them popular with their audiences. Malvika Surukai, apart from the incredible geometry of her movement lines, shows heightened awareness to social issues like ecology. The restrained distancing in Malvika lifts emotions above the mundane. Dwelling into the mind and body togetherness in dance, Malvika has worked a lot with abstract technique and her own creations are one woman ballets on different themes like Khajuraho, the life of a courtesan based on the 9th century work and on images of lived life in Varanasi and the region where the Ganga flows. Unlike many contemporary dancers, she reaffirms spirituality as an eternal base for dance. On the other hand, Alarmel Walli's dance is inspired by the Sangam period Tamil poetry from the text like Koruntogi, Kalitogai, Shilapadikaram and such. Through her dance, she highlights how this ancient secular poetry continues to be relevant to life even today. A very communicative dancer, Wallis Lissam Grace and easy ability to reach the audience have made her a great favorite. And one of the leading dancers from Delhi is Geeta Chandran, who studied Bharatanatyam under Swarna Saraswati from the Tanjavur Devadasi Parambara, also from V. Shadashivan and Guru K. N. Dakshinamurti. She further studied Abhinay under Jamuna Krishnan and Srimati Kalanidhi Narayan and V. Krishnamurti. She is a regular performer with a distinctly creative mind and her performances blend tradition and innovation. Her focus is also on experimentation, especially in the content which engages with issues and concerns of contemporary relevance in dance. She is also a prolific writer on dance with considerable research in Vachika Abhinaya. She is a trained and accomplished vocalist in Carnatic music too. Geeta teaches Bharatanatyam at her institution Natya Vriksha and in Delhi that she has founded. Natya Vriksha group presentations are known for their high aesthetic quality. She has evolved a holistic style of teaching the classical dance which engages young learners. She has presented the arangatums of many senior disciples who continue their training under her and have also started their own schools and teaching. Geeta continues to mentor over 100 disciples and several of them have blossomed as full-fledged performers in her choreography. Gita skillfully weaves the abstract notion of joy, beauty, values, aspiration, myth and spirituality. She sincerely believes that dance must be linked to life and that artists must use their unique position in society to make a difference to life and living. Therefore, her choreographed productions, her voice and imaging piece 
articulated her conviction that dance can be a vehicle to build social bridges, whereas the widely acclaimed production Kaikai and choreographed smaller pieces on the themes of drugs have thrown the spotlight on issues of social stigma. Her work of 2008, The Mythologies Retold, addresses the social curse of female forticide. Gita's book, So Many Journeys, is an intensely personal collection of her writings, which narrate her engagement with Bharatanatyam. The most recent and much talked about production of Gita is Gandhi. Through the movements of dance, she has skillfully and sensitively brought about the essence of Gandhiji and his doctrine of karma. And as you learn and go ahead in the field of art, it is not only performance and teaching of dance, but you will be responsible for administration, running an institution, running your own school and such. One such very astute, strong personality is Priyadarshini Govin, who is at present the director of Kalakshetra School Foundation and University, which is a deemed university now. Priyadarshini received her training in Bharatanatyam from Swami Malai K. Rajaratnam and Kalanidhi Narayan. It is no wonder that she has been acclaimed by connoisseur for her evocative and intense Abhinaya. With her natural aptitude for Abhinaya, coupled with her passion and dedication to her art, Priyadarshini has become a flag bearer of Kalanidhi's Padam repertoire. Priyadarshini's Nritta is intense and vigor. A dancer known for her adherence to tradition, Priyadarshini manages to seamlessly blend new choreography with the traditional, thereby gently redefining the boundaries of Bharatanatyam repertoire. She has undergone also training in Kalari Payatu, the martial art form of Kerala and Natuam from Kalakshetra besides learning to sing and to perform on television. As a director of Kalakshetra, she has to meet many challenges. She has to take the institution further and she has to keep up the traditions of Kalakshetra and its founder, Srimati Rukmini Devi. It's not any, any way a small job. And then we come to Pratibha Prallad, one of the Delhi based and Bangalore based young dancers with her innovative creativity that transcends the man mechanical in the traditional framework. Pratibha Prahlad has made a name for herself as one of the foremost of the new generation of classical dancers of the country. Pratibha's performances have always been an audio-visual experience and delight. They have contributed something new and meaningful, exciting and insightful to the present day dance scene. Pratibha Prahlad combines in herself various roles, performer, teacher, choreographer and arts administrator. Her passionate belief in the strength of traditional forms combined with the contemporary understanding of both has made her a modern day arts crusader. She has had the fortune of training under some of the best dance gurus that the country has ever seen, namely Guru V. S. Muthuswami Pillai, Guru Kalanidhi Narayan, Professor U. S. Krishna Rao and Dr. Vempati Chinna Satyam. Pratibha Prahlad organizes two major dance festivals, namely Sharad Vaibhava and Ek Aneka in Bangalore every year, besides organizing a colloquium on dance and related subjects every year. More importantly, in 1995, Pratibha started Vijayotsava, the Hampi National Cultural Festival in Hampi and introduced the concept of cultural 
tourism. Now the state government organizes this festival annually. Since last many years, that is I think 15 years, her Delhi International Dance Festival has given her a unique opportunity and position in the international dance scene. So, as the young and brilliant dancers of today, you have lots and lots of inspiration, creativity to look forward to. I wish you all the luck. Thank you. Namaste. Thank <laughs> you.